हेलो फ्रेंड्स मेरा नाम है विशेष गोयल और आप देख रहे हैं मेरे चैनल विकी वर्ल्ड तो आपका तह दिल से स्वागत है तो यहाँ पे मैं आपके पास क्लास ट्वेल्थ की इंडियन इकोनॉमिक्स का फर्स्ट चैप्टर लेकर आ गया हूँ जिसका नाम है इंडियन इकोनॉमी ऑन द ईव ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस और आज मैं आपको इसके नोट्स देने वाला हूँ तो बिना टाइम वेस्ट किए जल्दी से शुरू करते हैं द बैटल ऑफ प्लासी फोर्टीन सेवनटीन फिफ्टी सेवन चेंज द डेस्टिनी ऑफ आर कंट्री आफ्टर दिस बैटल द ब्रिटिश कॉलोनियल रूल स्टार्ट एंड लास्टेड फॉर अबाउट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स The main motive of all British activities or policies was to serve the interests of England. When India got independence on 15th August 1947, the state of Indian economy was very dismal. Indian economy before British rule. Agriculture was the main source of livelihood for most of the people, yet the country's economy was also characterized by various kinds of manufacturing activities. India was well known for its handicraft industry in the field of cotton and silk textile metal and precious stone work etc these products enjoyed a worldwide market because of the fine quality of material used and the high standards of craftsmanship the british rule the economic policies taken up by the british colonial government was mainly concerned with the economic interest of their home country rather than the development of indian economy its impacts first it transferred the economy into a supplier of raw materials and consumer of finished industrial products from britain second colonial government never made any sincere attempts to estimate india's national income or per capita income some people like william digby v k r v rao r c desai made attempts which were considered very significant millions of people were unemployed due to decline of handicraft industry fourth per capita income of indians was one of the lowest in the world fifth the real gdp was less than 2% per year and per capita gdp was about 0.5% per year agricultural sector under the british rule 85% of the country's population lived mostly in villages and depended mostly on agriculture the agricultural sector continued to experience stagnation and deterioration due to the first one is the zamindari system also known as revenue settlement british government introduced a unique system of land revenue in india its features first zamindars were known as the owners of the land second they extracted revenue from the cultivators who were employed for production activity third the zamindars were to pay a fixed sum to the british government as land revenue fourth they can recover as much from the tiller as they could implications first it lead to unlimited exploitation of tillers of soil by zamindars second farmers face immense misery and tension under this system third rates of land revenue were frequently raised by zamindar and fourth tillers were reduced to the status of landless laborers the second one is poor facilities the agricultural sector did not have good irrigation facilities and technology the productivity was very low due to negligible use of fertilizers it led to stagnation and low productivity in agriculture in certain areas of country due to commercialization of agriculture that is production of crops for sale in market rather than self consumption farmers produced cash crops like indigo instead of food crops like cereals etc which were to be ultimately used by british industries back home lack of resources the third one indian agriculture also suffered from lack of investment and resources as the british government did not invest sufficiently in agriculture so now the next one is industrial sector during the british rule The British government led to the collapse of India's world famous handicraft industries through its trade policies which were in favor of British industries. Its impacts. It created a massive unemployment in India. It created a new demand in Indian market for cheap manufactured products from Britain. Thus the handicraft industries suffered from great loss and foreign competition which they were not ready to face. India became net exporter of raw materials and primary products like raw silk cotton wool indigo etc India became net importer of finished goods produced by the british industries like cotton silk and woolen clothes etc modern industries there were certain developments in the modern industries in india 
cotton and jute textile mills were set up which were mainly located in western india that is maharashtra and gujarat tata iron and steel company tisco was incorporated in 1907 a few other industries in the fields of sugar cement paper etc came after the second world war shortfalls slow progress the progress of modern industries remained very slow second there were lack of capital goods industries to promote industrialization there were no substitutes to country's traditional handicraft industries low growth rate the growth rate of new industrial sector and its contribution to the gdp remained very slow next foreign trade first exports and imports India's foreign trade was adversely affected due to the policies of British government as Britain maintained a monopoly over India's import and export. India imported primary products and exported finished goods. This reflected the utter backwardness of Indian economy. Second, Suez Canal. The opening of Suez Canal in 1869 served as a direct route for ships between India and Britain. It reduced the cost of transportation and made access to Indian market easier. More than 50% of the trade was restricted to Britain. The remaining trade was with China, Sri Lanka and Iran. Third drain of India's wealth. The economic policies of British in India were primarily motivated to snatch maximum benefit from India's trade. Reasons. First, the surplus from trade was used to make payments for the expenses incurred by the office set by colonial government in Britain. The surplus was used to pay expenses on war. fought by the british government surplus was used to pay for the import of invisible items so the next one is demographic conditions the social development indicators in india were not impressive during the british rule as the first one is literacy rate it refers to those who can read and write the literacy rate was less than 16% reflecting economic and social backwardness female literacy rate was only about 7% this indicates gender bias in the society second is mortality rate death rate per thousand and for infant mortality rate the children below 1 year age the overall mortality rate was very high infant mortality rate was 218 per thousand as compared to the 40 today health facilities were unavailable or inadequate lot of water and airborne diseases were rampant in economy third is life expectancy it is the average life of a person it was 44 years as compared to the present 68 years it indicates the situation of poor healthcare services fourth is extensive poverty extensive poverty prevailed in india during british period fifth low standards of living at the time of independence people spent 80 to 90% of their income on basic necessities like food clothing housing etc still they didn't get adequate quantity the first official census was held in 1881 and after independence 1951 the year 1921 is described as great divide year the next is occupational structure during the british rule it refers to distribution of workforce across different industries and sectors that is primary secondary and tertiary agricultural sector accounted for 75% of share the and manufacturing and service sector accounted for only 25% of share there was growing regional variations in tamil nadu andhra pradesh west bengal kerala the dependence of workforce on agriculture declined but in odisha rajasthan and punjab the share was increased the growth in sectors was unbalanced so guys the next one is infrastructure development under the british rule some efforts were made by the colonial regime to improve infrastructure facilities in india such as railway port water transport etc but these efforts were spiced with selfish motives the real objective of british infrastructure development in india was to subserve various colonial interests and not to provide basic amenities to the people first one is railways railways were introduced in 1850 in india effects there was cheap and rapid movement of people from one place to another it promoted national unity it increased the commercialization of indian agriculture volume of india's export trade expanded it led to india's industrial development especially cotton and jute textiles 
Now the motive of Britishers. To have effective control and administration over the vast Indian territory. To earn profits through foreign trade. To create an opportunity for profitable investment of British funds in India. Second one is roads. The roads were built for the shifting of raw materials and mobilizing the army within India. There was a shortage of all weather roads to reach rural areas in rainy season. Those people suffered the most. Third is communication. Modern postal system started in India in 1837. Post and telegraphs were most popular means of communication. Expensive system of telegraph was introduced. Fourth is air and water transport. Government took steps in developing air and water transportation. These helped in import and export. Now we discuss the positive impacts of British rule in India. The first one is commercial commercial outlook of farmers. Forced commercialization exposed subsistence farmers to uncertainties of the market. Second, new opportunities of employment. Spirit of railways and roadways led to social and economic growth. Third, introduction of electric telegraph and postal service. They were useful to public and maintained law and order. Fourth is monetary system of exchange. Barter system changed in, into monetary system of exchange. Fifth and the last is efficient system of administration. This served as a ready reference for our politicians and planners. So, friends, today's video is enough. For watching this video, thank you very much. And if you like this video, please like this video, share this video, share this video, channel subscribe and bell icon. वीडियो कैसे लगी नीचे कमेंट्स में जरूर बताना मैं मिलता हूँ आप सबकी अगली वीडियो में तब तक के लिए टाटा बाय बाय एंड थैंक यू